Huge shout out to our executive producer for this month, Tom Dolan. Thank you. I had a video planned today that was about turfs and how much they suck, but fucking hell, it was so hard to research that without wanting to bang my head against the wall. So let's talk about films and more specifically why capitalism is making them safe and boring and repetitive and dull. Now, if you follow Jim Sterling, you'll know about his work with Capitalism ruining games, and I'm just going to push you towards him if you want some video game focused discussion about this, but, but we're going to talk about film because... Oh boy. Also, we're doing this old school style because you don't want to see my sweaty ass face today. <laughs> First, a primer on how these massive companies work. When you get to be a publicly traded company that's as big as someone like a Disney or a Warner, you become beholden to your shareholders, rather than your actual customers. Nathaniel Wayne did a really good breakdown on this on their second channel, so go ahead and give that a watch. But as a small primer, here goes. A company's shareholders don't just demand profit year over year, but growth year over year. If a company makes $5 billion in 2018, they will be considered a failure by their shareholders and potentially sued if they only make $4.9 billion the next year. As such, companies get more and more desperate to chase this infinite growth, and that leads them to care less and less about what us, the public, actually want, and they just sort of tell us what they want us to want, and then only making that. And all these things I'll discuss down the line will loop back to this point. The most important thing is making money not making a good product. There's this thing in Hollywood called pre-awareness, which is the idea that a film will be more well received if it's based on a thing that the audience is already aware of. That if an audience sees a poster with characters that they already recognize, they're more likely to go and see that movie. And they have charts that agree with them. I mean, for whatever reason, Ice Age 3 did better than Ice Age 1 did, and the number one grossing movie of all time is a bloody sequel. And on face value, that makes a lot of sense. If you end the conversation there, it sounds like, yeah, that's a logical point, right? But if you dig a little deeper, you see this argument is made by the very people who are constructing the problem in the first place. Let me explain. The way films are distributed in cinemas leaves very little wiggle room for anybody who isn't a major movie studio to get their films seen, with few exceptions. Take, for example, Parasite. So when it's basically just Disney deciding what films can come out and all they're making are sequels because it's easier to recognize them on a poster, I can only chalk that up to laziness. It is entirely possible to create an engaging and convincing trailer for a movie that doesn't rely on, hey, don't you recognize this character from comics or books or the last film we squirted out? But because that process takes a little more work and is a little less reliable, studios just resort to pumping out 23 fucking Marvel movies in the span of just over a decade. Because you have to remember that the company doesn't care about if the film is good, the company only cares about whether or not you buy a ticket. And sure, the reviews will make a difference about whether or not you do buy a ticket, but once a cinematic universe gets as big as a Marvel or heck even a Fast and Furious, they're gambling on you being invested in the franchise to the point of ignoring the reviews, and most of the reviews don't come out until after the opening weekend, which is the biggest source of the ticket sales. But they could be producing engaging original movies with original ideas, and they're deciding not to, simply because it's easier to sell you a movie that you're already sold on. IP. IP is a terrible concept that drives producers to do terrible things. For those of you that don't know, IP stands for intellectual property and just refers to basically the idea for a piece of fiction. So like the Spider-Man series is an IP, Pikmin is an IP, Gone with the Wind is an IP. And what IP writes, what they are in theory is that the person that thought of the idea should be able to say what happens to that idea. Now again, on its face, this sounds like a reasonable idea, right? If Jim Bimbles writes a really good book called, say, Coleslaw Man, then Jim Bimbles should be able to say what happens to Coleslaw Man, right? I mean, while I disagree personally, I think art should be free, but then I don't agree with capitalism in general, but we're tangenting. In the current hellscape, letting the creator of a thing decide what happens to that thing makes a little sense. But the way this concept has been twisted into what it is today is another facet of capitalism ruining art. Because now Jim Bimbles won't just get to make the Cole Slawman movie because the film industry is prohibitively expensive to get in. He has to sell the rights to Cole Slawman to a movie production company and then they get to make the Cole Slawman movie. Obviously they do the whole pre-awareness thing, they're gonna make the film because the book was so successful. But, but the way most of this IP contract business works, the film rights expire if they go unused, which just means that the film company will pump out sequel after sequel or continual terrible reboots just to maintain the rights because God forbid anybody else get the rights. And you know the whole infinite growth thing, so of course they're gonna keep just making films. So the film company in a desperate effort to keep making money will force life into a terrible franchise that nobody wants just because 
it's a name that people are aware of. So combining these two parts, we have a company that will make movies based on any property people have heard of just because they've heard of them, and then will then continue squirting out sequels just because they want to keep the rights to them. So we get a swath of unoriginal movies, sequels, prequels, reboots, adaptations. In 2019, every single one of the top 10 movies released was one of those. The 12th movie in this list, Us, is the first original one we see, and it's a spectacular, meaningful movie that is vastly over overshadowed by this industry reliant on infinite growth me via mediocre sameness. Movies like Us show that there is still creativity and risk taking in Hollywood, and with a little push they can perform almost as well as they deserve, vastly outshining the numerous movies built on pre-awareness that flop. Remember Rampage? Remember Baywatch? They got marketed way harder than Us ever did, and did far worse because they're uninteresting and boring movies, but they will still get pushed out because of pre-awareness and because of rights management. Now imagine for a second that capitalism didn't interfere with films. The people could just make the films that they wanted without having to worry about contracts and IP and who has the rights to characters and how you'll distribute them and whether or not you'll make enough money to avoid getting sued by your shareholders. You could just make movies, tell stories, exchange ideas. That'd be pretty great, wouldn't it? And if, with all this creative freedom, you really wanted to make a film about Batman, you could. We wouldn't have to put up with this allegory for the Bush era and whatever the fuck this is. It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? But we're stuck with this. We're stuck with capitalism shoving its ore into everything and ruining it in the process. And I'm stuck not having an ending to this video. But yeah, that does suck, doesn't it? Thank you to everyone for your support on Patreon, those, those of you make this video possible. Special shout out to the Fresh Cheese Bags of the Month, Carl Rad, Ethan Saffron, What Would Jedi Do, The Magpie Magus, Neurotic Anarchy, Malloy, Alex Bryson, and Swishy Clang. And a huge thank you to our executive producer for this month, Tom Dolan. Love you, bye.